Greater Manchester is, in a way, it's, it's just a, it's a massive big village, basically. So Jason Mansford's just been on, and me and him go back a million years, and when you meet people from town, it's always town, wherever you live, we go to town. Um, there are people that are part of that fabric, and I've not yet met anybody from Manchester, Greater Manchester, I don't think that's actually got one of them edges like, oh, I've made it, do you know who I am, ever. For some reason, it grounds us. And part of that whole flipping infrastructure, Liz Taylor, uh, Liz has been planning parties, getting celebrities into rooms, making things work. I mean, she's done stuff for Gary Neville. I went to a do once uh, for a lovely, for, uh, for families that have lost the kiddies. And the cabaret was Gary Barlow, and Gary Neville was the compere. That was the sort of level. And I've got a great picture of him kissing Vivian, which which she shows to all Gary Barlow's fans, which pigs them off greatly. Liz, I'm sorry, I'm just rabbiting on here. Good morning. Carry on. I'm loving this. This is marvellous. And let me tell you, I know that we're here to talk about Christmas parties, but I have got a real biggie coming up next year. And if you're a really good boy, you and Viv can come as my guest. A mega biggie. A mega biggie, yeah. But that's for another programme. Okay, that'll be great. And we'll get you in for that. I often wonder, because you've not left, right? You'd be excused after 30 years now to be, you'd be talking, we'd be doing a Zoom call because you'd have moved to London 20 years ago and you'd have some flipping posh muse house there and still do what you're doing. You, you're you here. Manchester is what made me and Manchester is where it all happened and I love the city and to be quite honest with you, I'm a big fish in a smaller tank. Why would I want to go to London? I don't need to be in London. I mean, this is where, you know, look back at the Hacienda and I mean, we're, we're it's a... What about you? You had the band. What was your band? Sulphur Jets. Yeah, Sulphur Jets. And they still book you. So there you go. And they're still booking me. Anyway, we're not here to talk about me, although I'd like to. Uh, We're here to talk about Christmas. I know, but I just, it amazes me (laughs) how you put these events together and how you can phone somebody up like Gary Barlow and say, oh yeah, Gaza, could you come down and do this? Uh, Yeah, all right, no problem, Liz. So that gives you great expertise. I must tell you, I'll let you into a little secret, that I did Howard Donald's wedding some years back and we remain great friends. And Emma Neville is would leave Gary Neville for Howard Donald. So when it was a birthday, I phoned up Howard. I said, get yourself up to Manchester. I'll pick you up from the station. We're going to surprise Emma Neville. And we went round to the house and he stood behind me. It was a birthday. And we rang the bell. She opened it and she was in her pyjamas and there he was. <laughs> I swear, honest to God, and and you know, but when you can do that for mates, and it's all about mutual respect and fun, and yeah, I've had some great fun. Right, we want to get parties that are not on the level that yours are. I'll give you a great example. So on Friday, we had our do here for BBC Radio Manchester, and by accident, we got a better room than the one we thought we were getting. So, and it turned out to be the best. Christmas party I've been to in my 10 years here. Uh, it was just mates together. Jason did a bit of karaoke and we all flitted around the room, you know, talking to one another and celebrating friendship and that. What for you are, are, are the magical ingredients for a Christmas shindig? Well, have you ever gone home from anything saying you had a great piece of chicken? No. No. You've gone home. No. You've gone home and you said exactly that. I was with a great crowd of people. The music was phenomenal, had a few beers, and those are the key ingredients. In the stuff that I do, you get more involved in production, so you get lighting and you get the theatre and the drama, but it's never about how much you spend, it's how you spend it. So for people that are doing Christmas this year, one of my top tips is go out, go into the park or something, get yourself some twigs, leaves, get all the stuff that you can and spray it, gold, silver, bronze, apples, fruits. You can create... You can create the theatre by being clever. And, yeah, I do do some amazing stuff, and I'm very lucky, but it's not about how much you spend. It's how you spend it. Because, of course, for... for in fact, this honestly includes me, because I'm, I've got a great job, but I'm not minted, and I, I've got to watch what I'm spending, like all of us. And everybody this year wants to have a great time, but I think a lot of people are going to try and do it on a bit of a budget. I think maybe you go back pre-COVID and maybe we did say, oh, I'm going to have a great Christmas on my credit card. I think this year people are going to be thinking, I've just got to be careful. And what, what would you 
what would you put up there? You've just given us that one. Forget stuff and spray it and don't buy it. Yeah, you actually didn't sell it as well as I did then, Mike. I said it much nicer. You go out and you get the golds and the bronzes and the silvers. Not go out, get up and spray it. I'll tell you the other thing as yeah, well. Yeah, but I'm not a party planner. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I think the other thing is this, that people aren't really that mither to go out. You, the Ubers are expensive. You can't get a cab. You don't... No one wants to drink and drive. So... Go out, go online, buy a load of milk bottles, make yourself a, a hot punch or a whatever, some mulled wine, stick some coloured straws in it, put it on a tray. You know, you you do your party with your eyes. You walk in, get some up lighters, get some pea lights, get some candles up the drive. As soon as you get up and you have that whole atmosphere and ambience, you're already in the party mode. I'm doing myself out of a job here. But those are the things that I would tell people to do. Just be clever, make it warm, make it enticing. And go on Spotify. I did a do the other day and I put on, I found a Motown thing on Spotify. And all those oldies are fantastic. Everyone, even my grandchildren will tap their toes to that. So what mistakes are you going to give us now? So what should we be avoiding doing that can maybe lead into trouble? Well, look, it, you don't. it's not rocket science. You don't go out and drink. You know, you don't get yourself into a situation that you're going to compromise yourself. But that's not my arena. My arena is designing and making... Re I mean, I did a party a few weeks ago for a guy called Barry White. It was his 60th down in Kent. And, of course, what do you do? I had a band from Paris. We pulled the curtain down and we opened to You're My First, My Last, My Everything. That's the extreme. But don't... don't don't put on credit cards. Don't put yourself out of comfort zone. We're all going to come into a very challenging 2023, including me. So cut your suit according to your cloth. Be clever. Go and buy your gold and bronze and silver sprays. And, 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 and get pineapples, mel anything. See, on music, I obviously have a bit of a bias because of my age. I'm a kid of the 60s. But I do love music from the 50s. 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and this stuff out now. I played a song early by the 1975 on this program that I absolutely love. But music now seems to be intergenerational. Very quickly, last New Year's Eve, my daughter phoned me up in tears, singing Twist and Shout down the phone to me just after midnight because that's what they were playing in the, where she was, and she's a student. Her sister, Siobhan, who's 10 years older, did exactly the same 10 years ago. So that song, Twist and Shout, being played in a club full of kids, it must be, it must be almost... It's timeless, Mike. Yes. Music is timeless. It's not generational. Anything from bossa to boogie to whatever... It's timeless. As long as you can tap to, tap your toe and sing along, and no one will ever. The Beatles, are, it's all even. You're timeless, and look how old you are. Thank. I think that's. I think that's a compliment. Just one more thing. I want to get you in when you're doing your mega thing next year. So let's have you wandering in on the program, there. and it's lovely to have you in the studio. I Thank love. You. I mean, yeah, zooming and all that stuff's great. Technology's wonderful, and we've had to embrace it. But I do love having human beings with me in the studio. If you could pick one amazing event, one only, and the one I went to the, the other year was incredible, what would be the one you're the proudest of? For I'm whatever reason. I'm proud of them all, and I've married two daughters in spectacular style, but I think the one that really floated my boat and slid me off my seat was when I got the call to go and work for... Um, Prince William and Catherine at Kensington Palace and I had a three week lead in and if you want to read about it it's in my book which is called Tailor Made did I send you a copy? It's alright, I've had it, absolutely and I'm launching the audio book I'm finishing it tomorrow and that's coming out in January but that was probably the most exciting thing when Prince William is your client Brilliant, we'll see you next year Thank Have you. a great Christmas Happy New Year <laughs> 